software myths. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explore some of the management myths and its corresponding realities. Relate some of the customer myths and their realities. Associate some of the practitioner's myths and their realities. Who is making noise in my castle? It's me. Oh, you little bat. How can you make noise in a vampire's castle? You are not a vampire. You are only a myth. I am the actual vampire. A myth? Yeah, of course. You are a myth. That is, a baseless or unscientific concept or belief. How dare you talk to me like this, little bat? Now you have to face the consequences for this behavior. I am sorry. I won't disturb you anymore. Please let me go. You can't go that easily, little bat. If you want to escape, I will give a chance. I will tell you some myths. You have to tell me the realities for those myths. Myths about what, Your Majesty? Little bat, technology has increased a lot in this modern era. Do you know about software engineering? Yeah, software engineering. It's a very interesting field. Oh, really? Then you have to tell me the realities for some of the software myths. That is, beliefs about software and the process used to build it. Follow me. Little bat. We will start with management myths. Here is your first task. Look inside the magic crystal ball. How can these people make all these mistakes in the software? We already have a book that's full of standards and procedures for building software. Won't that provide software practitioners with everything they need to know? Now, little bat, what do you have to tell about this? That's quite simple, Your Majesty. As you know, books of standard very well exist, but your concern should be about whether the books are complete. Are they adaptable to your situation? Does it focus on meeting deadlines as well as quality? Finally, are you concerned about whether software practitioners are aware of these books? In many cases, the answer to all these questions are no. Okay, okay. Here is your second task. What? As a team leader, at the end of the day, how can you tell that? We can't deliver the project on time. Do one thing. Add as many programmers as you want. And finish the projects on time. What's your take on this, little bat? Your Majesty, it's a foolish decision to add employees at the final stage. Adding people to a software project at a later stage makes it more delayed. Because it is time consuming to train the new people. It will adversely affect the productivity of the existing team. People should be recruited in a planned and a well-coordinated manner. You little bat! How arrogant you are! How can you tell my decision is wrong? Sorry, Your Majesty. Uh, I didn't want to say, but... Okay. Now get ready to do your next task. Okay, Mr. Team Lead. If you can't complete the project, we will outsource it to a third party. Little bat, you were saying that my last decision was foolish. How about this one? 
Your Majesty, I'm afraid to say that you are wrong again. What? If it is not possible for your organization to manage and control software projects internally, you will struggle when you outsource it. You are irritating me a lot, little bat. You are not going to escape from me. Now it's time for you to give me the realities for the following custom amends. I will try, Your Majesty. Majesty, you in the form of a customer? I can't believe my eyes. Sir, I have provided you the general statement of objectives of the software which I require. And I will let you know the details about the objectives later. Majesty, Majesty, ouch, ouch, sorry. Little bat, you are really making me angry. Why are you interrupting me? Your Majesty, how can you expect the best result by simply providing the general statement of objectives alone? Unambiguous requirements are developed only through effective and continuous communication between the customer and developer. Is said like that? Then listen to this. I am not a project manager like you, but I know that software is flexible and any changes can be made at any time. Then why are you asking for money again? M Mr. Bat, what's your take on this? Your Majesty, you're right that software requirements will change. But the impact of change will vary with time. When major change requests are raised at the final stages, it will cost you more because the resources, design, framework, etc. would have been committed at the initial stage of the project. Little bat, I know you have tried hard to answer me, but I'm not convinced. I want you to meet one more task. If you could convince me by giving proper realities for the practitioner's myth, I will let you go. I will try, Your Majesty. Hooray! I finished my task and it is delivered to the customer. I think my effort should end here. What's your opinion, little bat? That is not the reality, Your Majesty. Research has proved that about 60 to 80 percent of the effort spent on software development has to be spent again after the software is delivered to the customer for the first time. Is it like that? Okay, okay. Now listen to this. The manager is insisting me to produce quality software. But how can I check the quality without running the software? Majesty, you are wrong. I can suggest you to use the concept of formal technical review, which is a quality filter that is applied at each stage of the software development. Little bat, that was a good one. Here is your next task. I can't tolerate this. Project manager is requesting me to provide the customers with various work products at each stage. But I believe that the working program is the only deliverable and it can be delivered only after completing. Your Majesty, a working program is only one among the variety of work products that can be delivered. Other products which can be delivered at different stages of software development for providing guidance for software support are models, documents, plans, etc. I am pleased with your answer, little bat. Here is your last task. Oh no, not again. My project manager wants me to develop all these documents. This is terrible. Your Majesty, software engineering is not about creating documents. These documents will help you to improve your quality and thereby reduce the scope for rework, which in turn gets software delivered on time. 
You have answered marvelously well, little bat. I am really happy that you made me understand that for every myth, there is a corresponding reality. Thank you, Your Majesty. You have given me the realities for management myths, customer myths, and practitioner's myths. You have even made me realize that I am also a myth. Now, this castle is yours. Now you can play and squeak as you wish. Oh, I can't believe this. I will always be grateful to you, Your Majesty. Summary This brings us to the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you have learned that the knowledgeable software engineering professionals recognize three types of myths. Management myths, customer myths, practitioners myths. There are various management myths and realities like adding programmers at a later stage to a delayed project is not a solution. It's a myth. In reality, this cannot be advised. There are various customer myths and realities. One among them is, according to the customer accommodating software requirement at a later stage of software development is also possible, but in reality it is expensive. There are various practitioners myths and realities, for instance, on completion of the delivery of a software, for the first time the persisting myth is that the work of the developer or practitioner is done. Perhaps the reality is that more than 60% of effort needs to be put on the developed software too. And also, we learnt that the software myth is the metaphor that enlightens the developer to address how software needs to be developed and maintained.